In this video, we will learn the fundamental building blocks needed to prove that two triangles are congruent. So right off the bat, please understand that there are five ways to prove that triangles are congruent. Um, if we have three pairs of congruent sides, if we have two pairs of congruent sides and the angle in the middle, if we have two pairs of congruent angles, and the side in the middle, if we have two pairs of congruent angles and the side that's not in the middle. And in addition to that, we have hypotenuse leg, which only applies to right triangles. Notice that um, in terms of putting together random uh, combinations of sides and angles, the following two do not work. Um, there is no side-side angle theorem, okay? So don't try to use that. And there is no angle-angle-angle congruence theorem. So do not try to use that either. So is there enough information here to determine that these two triangles are congruent? Well, in addition to what's already marked, we have a shared side PS. And uh, this side will be congruent for both triangles by the reflexive property. So let's go ahead and mark that. Now I see that we have a side, an angle, and a side. We have two sides and the angle in the middle. So that is, in fact, side, angle, side congruence. And uh, we can say that triangle PRS is congruent to triangle, let's see, PRS, so PQS. P, Q, S, all right? The order matters. Um, notice if we have two triangles that are not congruent, we will circle this and leave these blank. Do not fill these in if you're circling. Triangles cannot be proven congruent. Uh, in problem number two, in addition to what is already marked, we also know that these vertical angles are always going to be congruent. So I see that I have two angles and a side. And I'm also noticing that the side is not between the angles. So I'm going to write down two angles and a side. But I'm going to make sure that I don't put the side in between the angles. So this is angle, angle, side, not angle, side, angle. All right, so GHI, all right, will be congruent to triangle Okay, G clearly corresponds with J. You can tell because of the way they're marked. Um, H is blank, so that corresponds with K. And, you know, I corresponds with I. So there you go. All right, in addition to what is already marked, side LN is shared by both triangles, so that'll be congruent by the reflexive properties. Um, that gives me two sides and an angle. Um, so the question is, is this uh, side angle side, which is good, or is this side side angle, which does not prove anything? And it's all about whether or not this angle is between the sides. And it is. If you look at these two sides, the angle is between the sides. If you look at these two sides, this angle is between the sides. So that makes this side, angle, side. Um, now, this is what many students will get wrong, is the congruent statement. Um, so be careful. Looking at the top triangle, all right, we have uh, the top triangle is angle L, M, N. Okay, um, you know what, maybe I should draw these separately just to make a point. Okay, so here you see triangle LMN uh, in purple, and then you see triangle um, LON in red. And I've separated them to make it clear what I'm doing. So this is triangle LMN. All right, it's a little bit off screen. And this is triangle LO. N. All right, so let's mark what is congruent for both triangles. 
So uh, we have this angle right here, angle L, is marked congruent with angle, well, the red angle N. Okay, so notice, angle L is not congruent to angle L. So when I make my congruent statement later, um, angle L of the one triangle will not match up with angle L of the other triangle. They are not congruent. All right? Um, all right, we also have segment LM marked congruent to ON. So those are going to be congruent. Okay? So, now, in terms of what corresponds to what. So notice that uh, in the first triangle, angle L corresponds with angle N in the second triangle. So when I make my uh, second triangle um, listed in the congruent statement, where angle L is, I'm going to put angle N, because those are corresponding. All right? And then, of course, uh, angle M corresponds with angle O. So I'm going to put that next. All right? That's probably pretty obvious. And then that just leaves. Um, so we did N and O, so that leaves angle L. So uh, angle L is actually going to correspond with angle N. Okay, so it's time for angle L, N-O-L. So a lot of students would have written that backwards. Sometimes if you draw the triangle separately, it makes it easier to see that L does not correspond to L. N does not correspond to N. Okay, L corresponds to N and N corresponds to L. All right, for number four, we're given that AB is congruent to DB. So AB is congruent to DB. And we are given that BC bisects angle ABD. Um, to bisect means to cut in half. So here's angle ABD. And we are told that segment BC, which is right here, bisects that angle. In other words, uh, it cuts that angle in half. So if that's true, then that means that this side is going to be congruent to that side. So we can go ahead and mark that. Um, in addition to those two angles, we can also mark the shared side as being congruent in both triangles. So I see that I have a side, an angle, and a side. The angle is between the two sides. So that makes this side, angle, side. OK, and this time, um, angle B does correspond with angle B for both triangles. You can tell because of the way they're marked. So uh, triangle ABC, all right, that's ABC, will correspond to triangle DBC. All right, triangle D, B, C. In number five, we are told that angle A is congruent to angle D. All right, so angle A is congruent to angle D. And we are told that uh, B, A is parallel to D, C. Now, please, please be careful. Um, these sides are parallel. They are not congruent. So a lot of students, as soon as I put a mark on here like this, all right, this little triangle means that this is parallel to this. All right, now when it's time to decide that the triangles are congruent, these marks do not mean these sides are congruent. So when I'm talking about side angle side or something like that, I cannot count these marks as uh, one of the S's. However, um, Parallel sides lead to congruent angles. All right, they don't give you congruent sides, they lead to congruent angles. Um, sometimes parallel sides form part of a Z. So for example, can you see that I could draw a Z like this? Um, you know what, is there a better Z that I can draw? Uh, no. So, uh, so I know this is a backward Z, but it still counts. Okay, um, and that's important because 
when you can draw a Z out of parallel lines, then these alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So the angles in the corner of the Z like this are going to be congruent. So we can go ahead and mark those. Um, in addition to that, the shared side, let me erase this Z for a second because we don't need that right now. In addition, in addition to that, we can mark the shared side um, as being congruent for both. That's the reflexive property. So I have two angles and a side. Okay, so looking at it this way, this would be um, angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. Because notice the side is not between the two angles. All right, this side would be between angle B and A. But side BC is not between these two. Um, so that's why I chose um, the method that involves two angles and the side that's like off to the side. It's not between, this S is not between the two A's. This side is not between the two angles. Anyway, back to the congruence statement. All right, be careful. Many students will get this wrong. Okay, triangle ABC, that's the top triangle. So uh, angle A clearly corresponds with angle D. Most students will get that right. It's the next one that students mess up. Um, many students will think that angle B of the top triangle will automatically correspond to angle B in the lower triangle, but that's not true. Look at the markings. In the top triangle, angle B has a double mark. In the bottom triangle, it's angle C that has a double mark. All right, so angle B actually corresponds to angle C. All right, so now I've got DC, that leaves angle B. In problem number six, we have parallel sides again. Uh, do parallel sides lead to congruent segments, con you know, congruent sides, or do they lead to congruent angles? Hopefully you just said congruent angles. Parallel sides give you congruent angles. And uh, one more time, here's how. Uh, we're told that BD is parallel to AC. These arrows mean that these sides are parallel. It does not mean they are congruent. Um, but because they are parallel, I'm going to use them to draw the letter Z. Well, I guess it'll look more like an N because it's on its side. Either way, if you look at the corners of this Z or N, whatever you want to call it, all right, these corners are alternate interior angles, and they will be congruent. So uh, go ahead and mark those. All right, now I'm just going to erase the Z to get it out of my face. Uh, we can also mark the shared side because of the reflexive property. Uh, BC is congruent to BC. And uh, we are further given that angle A and D are right angles. All right, so angle A and angle D are right angles. Um, which automatically makes those congruent as well. So that is enough information to prove that these triangles are congruent because we have two pairs of congruent angles and uh, a pair of congruent sides. Angle, angle, side. I'm going to call it angle, angle, side and not angle, side, angle uh, because it's all about is the uh, side between the angles. No, this is the side that's between these two angles. And that's not marked. So I have two angles, and then I have the side that's not between. So I put the two A's, and then I put the S not between. All right? Um, if it was AC that was congruent, then, then it would be angle, side, angle. All right, but not, not today. Anyway, the congruent statement. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle what? Clearly, A corresponds with D. Uh, what about B? 
Again, be careful. Um, angle B of the top triangle corresponds with angle C of the bottom triangle. Okay? Because clearly, um, angle C of the top triangle is marked congruent with angle B of the bottom triangle. All right, so again, don't think that B is going to automatically correspond with B. In this case, it does not. Number seven, C is the midpoint of BE. All right, here's BE. So if C is the midpoint, that means that EC is congruent to CB. So we can go ahead and mark those. Um, here comes parallel again. While I'm marking these, do parallel lines give you congruent sides or congruent angles? Hopefully you shouted out congruent angles, not congruent sides. So yeah, these arrows mean that these are parallel. They are not necessarily congruent. Um, however, parallel sides lead you to congruent angles because um, in situations like this, you can draw a letter Z using the parallel sides. So I'm going to start by tracing my parallel sides, and then I'm going to draw a Z. Okay. So because of that, um, the corners of the Z are alternate interior angles, which will be congruent when the lines are parallel. So I can mark those. Okay, in addition to that, um, I also have vertical angles. So I'm going to erase this Z for now. And I have my vertical angles, which are also congruent. So that is enough to prove that these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. Two angles and the side that's not between. So that is angle, angle, side. And triangle ABC, let's see, ABC is going to be congruent to triangle DEC. Okay, be careful of the order here. All right, taking a look at uh, number eight. Angle B is congruent to angle D. So let's mark that. So angle B is congruent to angle D. A is the midpoint of CE. So here's CE. If A is the midpoint, that means that CA is congruent to AE. Okay, here come those parallel sides again. All right, one more time. When I have parallel sides, does that mean that the sides are congruent? No. Parallel sides lead to congruent angles. Now this one's a little bit different than the ones we've done so far um, because this time I'm not going to have in the previous problems, I drew the letter Z, or the letter N, to identify the uh, congruent angles that are created by parallel lines. Um, but this time, if you stretch your mind, you're looking for the letter F. Okay, because if I can make a sort of an F out of these, then I will have corresponding angles. When I made the Z, those were alternate interior angles. Uh, which are congruent. But corresponding angles are also congruent. And uh, so if you start by tracing the parallel lines, and then if you can find a line in the picture that connects those parallel lines, then that's the F. Okay, uh, I know you have to use your imagination. All right, but I mean, here's the idea. This is supposed to be sort of like an upside down F. Okay, like that. All right, can you see the F? Anyway, um, the corners of the F are corresponding angles. And when the lines are parallel, these will be congruent. So I can go ahead and mark these. 
Okay, so once again, I have two angles and then a side that is not between them. So once again, that is going to be angle, angle, side. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, let's see, ABC. So that's going to be EDA. All right, one more. A is the midpoint of CF. So here's CF. A is the midpoint. That means CA is congruent to AF. Um, here come the parallel lines again. Uh, let's see. AB is parallel to FD. All right, so AB is parallel to FD. Parallel lines do not mean congruent. Parallel lines actually lead to congruent angles. Um, I'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and mark the other thing first. Um, angle B is congruent to angle D. So I know that angle B is going to be congruent to angle D. Now, back to those parallel lines. Parallel lines lead to congruent angles. Uh, and you can find them by first tracing the parallel lines. And then look for either a Z or an F. If you can draw a Z out of it, you will have some alternate interior angles. If you can draw an F, you will have corresponding angles. So um, if I connect those parallel lines, all right, by tracing this side, then I'll have this F shape. I know it takes a little bit of imagination, but you're supposed to be picturing this um, upside down F. Anyway, the corners of the F are corresponding angles. And uh, if these lines are parallel, they will be congruent. So that means that this angle is going to be congruent to this angle, the corresponding angles. So once again, I have angle, angle, side. Two angles and a side that is not included, not in between. So these are congruent by angle, angle, side. So triangle ABC, let's see, ABC is congruent to triangle FDA. Triangle FDA. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe, or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.